If you would like to slow down and be a little bit more thoughtful with your photography and you love vintage cameras, this is a great way to get into it. In this case, made from Moroccan leather, is a very special camera from that vintage era. Just uh, by looking at its carry case shows the quality and the care taken uh, in production. Keep in mind all the camera items I'm showing in the video today are nearly 100 years old and that really is a testament to the quality and how good, well they built cameras in that era. This is the Voigtlander Burkheil. It's a folding plate camera. Comes in a very small package and is very light. Um, it was built with care and precision like all German cameras uh, from about 1914 to 1927. It was built in various uh, plate sizes uh, 4.5 by 6, 6.5 by 9, 9 by 12 and the rare 10 by 15 centimeter camera. They're all metal bodies covered in leather this version was built around 1925 and is the 6.5 by 9 version. Unless you can cut your own film and load into single sheet holders, you would need a film sheet, put the film into the sheet, load it into the film holder, and then put the dark slide in, and then you're ready. Ready to, uh, ready to go with that. If you cut your own glass negatives at this size, you wouldn't need the film sheet. You just simply put them into the holder there, close the, uh, close the dark slides and that's ready to go. If you can't uh, cut your own film or you don't, you, you can't get all of glass negatives, then the best solution is to use uh, a roll film back. This is a, a roll film back made by Rada. It uh, will give you eight six by nine negatives on a roll of 120 film. Uh, you load the Rada in the normal way, like any roll film camera. You close the back, wind it onto number one. The thing to remember with with the Rada is uh, when you're shooting six by nine uh, size, the you, you need to wind on using odd numbers. So say you're uh, on number one, to get to number uh, the next negative, you'd have to wind to number three, then five, and then seven. And that ensures that you get the full six by nine negative. So that's the rider back. They, they do come up quite uh, extensively on, on eBay and, they, and they're not, not expensive. And they do mean that you can use uh, some of the old cameras because we can still buy 120 roll from these days. This is how the router back fits onto the back of the camera. You take out the ground glass screen and then just slide the router back on. Close the latch. That means now you, um, you first focus with the ground glass screen on. Once, that, once you've achieved focus, uh, set the exposure. Uh, take your light read and set the exposure, then put the rider back on, put the dark slide out and then take the photograph, put the dark slide back, wind onto the next frame then take the back off. Always remember to keep the dark slide in. Just simply slide out then you put the, the ground glass screen back in ready to take the next photograph. So that's how to fit the router back. All the cameras have double extension. I'll extend this camera fully. And this which will facilitate both long focus lenses and uh, close focus with a standard lens. You can nearly get to life size when it's fully extended. The lens is mounted on a Compo shutter and it's the highly desired 105mm Helio lens. Shutter speeds run from B one second to uh, a maximum of um, 1 250th of a second. The aperture is set with this slider there 
and then you, you can see it at the top moving. And then you align that up with the desired aperture. On this lens it runs from f4.5 to f25. An odd number, but that's how they did it those days. Nowadays it's probably f22. This dial to uh, control the shutter, the, Ger the German uh, abbreviations. Uh, Z stands for Zeit, which means time. That means, I'll put the cable release in and show you. That means if you set it to Z, when you press the shutter, oh, that isn't in properly. When you press the shutter, it stays open. Press it again, it closes. Open to closes. And that's for when you're using the, the ground glass screen. So you press it once, you can focus, press it again to close it. D is for uh, bulb function, which uh, most modern cameras have. So you press it once, the shutter opens, release and it closes. And M is German for moment. And this is what you use for timing your split second exposures. So if we set this camera to say half a second, cock the shutter, fire, do another uh, time setting, let's set it to um, one tenth of a second, another old setting, cock the shutter, that's uh, so M is for times, split seconds, D is for bulb, and Z is for opening and closing the shutter for focusing. There are three ways to compose using the, the Bergheil. Obviously the first one is the ground glass screen. You will put it on Z, open the shutter, focus, close the shutter, and then put your radar back on and take the picture. The other way is to use the bright finder. Let's see if I can show you some of the video. That gives a good approximation. In daylight, it's a lot clearer. You can see my hand moving there. And you can use it in that position for side on. And again, you can see my. Uh, I am moving. With that you will get parallax error which means we're looking through this lens but that's the taking lens as a distance gap but for all uh, intents and purposes of normal distances and not close-up um, that wouldn't matter. For close-up work you would have to use the ground glass focusing screen. The third way of, of um, Comp scene composition is the wire frame. Open the wire frame, open the back frame and then you look through this frame and line up these wires with this frame and then you've got your composition. Again you will get parallax error because there's a difference between what you see here and what you see there. Um, on the front of the camera uh, they, it does have a movement, uh, rise and fall. Um, so let's say you were taking a picture of a building or anything that's vertical and you can't get the top of the frame in so you tend to tilt your camera upwards. That will give you conversion verticals. With this camera you can raise the front standard and that eliminates the, the need to tilt the camera upwards. You can even go down slightly with it. So, so it has a bit of a downward movement as well. So that's a handy feature. It's a slow process uh, using these cameras, but it does make you think carefully about the picture and the picture taking process. Using uh, these old cameras is also uh, a step back in time, how it used to be done decades ago. They all have a story to tell. The Berg Alfinson was used by I think I could pronounce it, Julius Brazier. Uh, the Burger was Brazier's favourite camera and he used it extensively to record a famous series of images 
uh, of Paris in the 1920s and 30s. And regarding the Helio lens, uh, it is said that the Japanese Emperor Hirohito, who is claimed to have so admired the Helio lens that he would only allow his picture be taken with a Helio lens. Now that's a great story. I will leave you now with a few pictures I have taken with this beautifully made uh, folding plate camera and um, I hope you, it um, opened your eyes to vintage photography. It really is fun and uh, if you can get hold of a camera like this or similar to this I'm sure you would really enjoy the, the process. Thank you for watching.